Welcome to episode 106 of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host today. And today we're talking about the fact that you can't see the meaning through the trees. Clarity can only really exist in the light of truth. Branding just isn't a tactic. It's a lifestyle change. All right, what's up? The moment of clarity for this week is that there's a major difference between happiness and meaning. We're gonna talk about it more in the episode, but it's so important I wanted to talk about it twice. Just because you're happy doesn't mean you have meaning because happiness is temporary. I see a lot of people that are happy that don't have any meaning in their life when the lights go off, when they go home by themselves, there's the emptiness. So please, 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 please don't ever confuse happiness with meaning. Pursue meaning and you'll get happiness. That's my moment of clarity for this week. Talk to you soon. I'm so excited for what he's gonna show me. Hurry up and show me Paul's pick. So Paul's pick for this week is the book that I reference in this episode. It's called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. He was a prisoner in Auschwitz, the worst prison camp ever. So do you think we might have something to learn from the person who survived one of the most horrific things in humanity? I think so. So I think you should check it out. Man's Search for Meeting, it fits this episode like a glove. What I mean when I say you can't fix the meaning through the trees is the fact that there's a concept called the fog of life. Um, actually, there's a concept called the fog of war, and it's what happens when a soldier is in war. They make decisions um, in in a, a really compressed environment, an environment where there's live fire and there's lives at stake. And so decision-making can really get skewed and changed because it's such a high pressure situation. They call it the fog of war. So you have to do a lot of training and discipline yourself to make more linear, rational decisions when you're in a completely irrational situation. So I've taken that fog of war mentality and I've coined something called the fog of life. And I feel that in life, it's the same thing. We're often making decisions based on situations and emotions and uh, deadlines and family crisis and, emo and heartache and all these things that skew our ability to make the decisions we want. I call it the fog of life. And I think that it's really hard to remember and define our meaning, whether that's our meaning as a person, our meaning as a company, when we're in the middle of the fog of life, in the middle of the, in the thick of it. And I, I know that you know what I mean, but I believe if we can define the meaning, keep the meaning at the center, then we'll be able to cut through the fog of life and find fulfillment even in the difficult things of life. Now in business, this plays out a lot of the time as a mission statement. And I'm going to talk about um, a meaningful mission statement a little bit later in the podcast. I'm going to give you an example. Um, ours is a company. I'm going to talk through that a little bit. But in our personal lives, the mission is typically less defined. I think business and commerce has kind of forced us into this bucket where we feel like it's we're supposed to define it. But in our personal lives, we're Arguably, it's much more important because business is run by people, and if people have meaning, then they're going, going to be more intentional and um, more fulfilled, but we don't really take the time a lot to define it in our personal lives, although it is very important to define. So let's back up for a second, and let's see if you agree with me on this. So in our culture today, we spend our time... Largely, I'm saying the we as in our culture, not you and I, but maybe you and I as well, because we're part of the culture. We spend our time trying to eliminate, eliminate and remove struggle from our lives. We want to make our lives more convenient, more easy, more seamless, more catered to us, right? We have, we have this, right? And all the settings and the parameters, we set them, we set our house temperature, we try to be financially secure, we try to live someplace we love and control the weather and control the climate in our car, dual climate control, dual climate seats. Um, and it really is this, this goal and this kind of idolization of like, let's pursue comfort. But I would also argue that without struggle, then our lives can become devoid of meaning. 
because a lot of the time, the meaningful things in life come through struggle and through tension. This is why uh, we see people trying to climb mountains. Like why would anyone go through the pain and heartache of trying to climb a mountain? Why? Because they find meaning in it. Why would anyone go through the pain and struggle of childbirth? I mean, I didn't personally go through childbirth, but I witnessed it. And after my wife had our first child in labor for like a full day, because it was our first, I looked at her and I said, babe, I never want you to have to go through that again. And anybody that's witnessed childbirth or been through childbirth understands exactly what I mean. Long story short, we now have three kids. So, you know, that feeling wore off and we got to it. So, but, but what I want to, what the point I wanted to get is that when we try to eliminate those things from our life, eliminate struggle, eliminate trials, we actually lose a lot of meaning. I think this is why the rich and famous, a lot of the times people in Hollywood, people that make it, people that will look, we would look at their life and say, well, their life is largely devoid of struggles, trials, worry about money, rich, famous, everything lined up, everybody catering to all their needs. What happens a lot of the time to those people? Well, they become addicted to substances. They become depressed. Sometimes they even take their own lives. Why? I think because they've lost the meaning or they didn't have any to begin with. The meaning was always like money or stuff or lack of struggle. And then when all those things were removed, guess what happened? They didn't have any meaning and it was empty. So this is why I think we're driven to seek new challenges. It's why I think um, that when you take away struggle, we kind of break down as a human and I want to talk about um, some of those elements, dynamics, and how I think we can get on track and stay on track to define meaning and to have org run organizations and have personal lives that are a little more fulfilling and kind of what we want. And I think meaning is really the next phase of leadership because if a leader is going to lead, then they must, without a doubt, they must have a stated meaning. They must have an understanding of the meaning for why the group of people that they are leading should move forward. So in a lot of ways, meaning is the fuel that powers leadership. Let's go to the basis of meaning. I think we always want to make meaning about ourselves. What is my meaning? Why am I meaningful? But as I think about it more, as I am really working through it, I think that meaning has to, it absolutely has to point to something outside of ourselves. Think about that. How can I have meaning if it's only about me? How is that even possible? Can you be meaningful to yourself? Can you find meaning by serving yourself can you find meaning in a vacuum? I don't think you can. I don't think you can. I think meaning has to have an object. There has to be an object of the meaning. And let me give you some examples. So as a father, I find meaning in being a father. I can only do that if there are children to love and provide for and support. That brings me meaning, but only because they find value in it. So I know we got a little philosophical this week, but I thought it was just a great tag on the end of the leadership episode, talking about meaning because you can't be a great leader unless you understand and harness the power of meaning. I highly recommend you read Viktor Frankl's book, Man, Search for Meaning, because I believe that this understanding will revolutionize the way you lead, the way you work, the way you family, the way you relax. So. First, I just want to thank you for listening this far. Thank you for being a part of this community. And I hope we're growing more connected as we do. May you have a meaningful week. May you have a meaningful career. And may you work hard to define what meaning is for you so that you can now make decisions that move you forward and bring more fulfillment. And yes, maybe just a little more happiness. This Clarity Compressed Podcast, episode 106. I'll see you next week. Yeah. Yeah.